Welcome, Keisha. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. That's amazing. Well deserved. Thank um, you. you should feel honored. It's a. This is very important to me. <laughs> this one means a lot. Excellent. Um, so let's start by talking about your background a little bit, um, where you grew up, what you did before you landed at Fitchburg State, and, and how you came to be part of this community. Sure, I, I grew up in Southern Illinois, uh, and actually both my parents were teachers, which is another reason this is very important to me as well. Uh, my father was a high school teacher, high school science teacher, and my mother was an elementary school teacher. And I went to the University of Evansville in Indiana for my undergraduate. I uh, did an English degree there uh, as well as history and Latin and had some really amazing people, uh, especially the medievalist who is there is, is, is fantastic, Dr. Parks, and uh, then uh, moved on to the University of Connecticut for my master's and my PhD and had some amazing teachers and people there, advisors there. Uh, and then in 2010, I, uh, I landed at Fitchburg State. So with this um, excellence in teaching award, Talk to us a little bit about what you think it, it takes to be a yeah. excellent teacher. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I usually start with the fact that my uh, short teaching philosophy is students are people too. Uh, and I think sometimes we can forget that when we're in the, in the process of you know, trying to deliver content and trying to del you know, do all of the things we do in the classroom. Um, but that's really where I start from it uh, is that um, you know thinking about the human side of our students and how what humans need in order to learn in order to be at their best and that's why I you know I tend to uh, practice both uh, inclusive teaching uh, as well as um, trauma-informed teaching uh, I also do universal design all of these kind of work together to to really think about the student as a human being first and then and then think uh, about everything else that goes into it. I'm sure all of that comes across to the students because um, you as the professor can be intimidating to them as well. Yeah. So um, to, to see them as humans, I'm sure it helps open up in the class. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I found that, especially with the type of students we have at Fitchburg State, uh, which who are awesome, uh, that you know that it's very important to be able to, for them to see that that we're also human beings uh, too, and that we have some of the same things going on in our lives that they have going on in theirs, and that's been even more important during the COVID period. Yeah. Speaking of our students, tell me a little bit more about the students yeah. you serve, we serve at Fitchburg State. I, I love them so much because yeah. they 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 uh, are so strong. Uh, I, I'm constantly amazed by how much they balance. Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of our students, uh, as you know, are going to school full time, working full time. Mm -hmm. Some of them have families uh, of their own or families that they're helping out with, uh, as well as any number of other things that they're involved in uh, along the way. And yet they still manage to, to to do it. You know, they still manage to to get through classes. Sometimes it's a little rougher than others, but they still manage to persevere and keep going. So I'm really the only person they're going to have be having contact with at that you know that level that's going to you know be that focused on medieval literature. Yeah. And so it's 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 an opportunity and it's an honor because uh, you know this is this is what they're going to learn about yeah. this from the from this from an expert at least. This is what they're in school. This is what they're going to learn from it. So yeah, I the students are amazing. I I really can't admire them enough mm -hmm. for what they are able to accomplish in very difficult circumstances sometimes. But I know you also never never stop thinking about your practice <laughs> yeah. and what else to do, how to improve. Um, so talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I think it's very important to keep questioning our practice and keep examining it and keep doing new things. Uh, for f many reasons. I mean, one of the reasons is, is if we keep doing, the, you know, we tend to do certain classes over and over again. There's, there's classes that are, you know, writing one, writing two, British literature yeah. one that, that I teach all the time that you can really get into a rut with if you're not re-examining them and thinking about them all the time and how you might want to change things uh, and do that. And the students know that. Like, if you're stale, they're going to feel it. And so it's important to, to really do that. But it's also really important to think about how you approach it and really think about the scholarship of teaching and learning and think about the practices and best practices out there uh, for what our students need. And our students' needs are constantly changing. I think if COVID proved anything, it was that. We had to, to really relearn what were priorities for our students in the last few years. I try to constantly be a part 
of new professional development in whatever way. I'm a, a member of the Faculty Academy, which I can't praise high enough. It's, a, it's an amazing experience. I've done a lot of professional development. I've led a lot of professional development, and this is really the best one I've ever wow, been involved that's in. that's amazing. Because it really gets at the heart of being, uh, being aware of our students and communicating with our students on a personal level. So I, I really think it's important to constantly both be studying about teaching and, and how to do that, but also presenting about our own teaching and, and being a part of that community as well and, and you know, sharing things with other people and, and learning from what other people are doing. And you modeled that and facilitated that as well when you were the director of the CTL. Yeah, one of um, my favorite positions I enjoy, I really enjoyed being the, the, CT, the CTL director was a um, very important job for me and I, and I really feel very strongly about its mission still. Um, so as we think about some of our, maybe our junior faculty, or maybe any of our faculty actually, um, and their role in the classroom with our students, what advice might you give um, your yeah. colleagues? Uh, stay connected to the students would be very high on my list. It can, we can so easily get caught up in our own you know, problems or grading or the things that we have to do and, and committee work and all of that sort of thing and forget that it's all about the students is mm -hmm. what we're really here for. Everything that we do is for them. And so, you know, staying close to them is very key and not, not forgetting that that's where, where we, where our priorities are. Talking to other people, be sure to get out there, take advantage of the opportunities that are out there to be able to do that. I think all of that is, is very useful. It can be hard because there's only so many hours it's in the day to do things, for sure. but it is a, I think it should be a priority for us. Well said. <laughs> um, I, I know I appreciate, as do um, folks all across campus, all you do for our students in the university. Thank you. Um, very deserving of this award. Congratulations. Thank you, Kathy. Um, well deserved. <laughs>